is an increase in the incidence of accidental ingestion of button cell or coin cell batteries. These are the small batteries that you find in toys and watches and hearing aids. Um, they're all over the place. Uh, the United States has been tracking these accidental ingestions. It turns out there's 73,000 accidental ingestions on record during the past 30 years. Um, there's somewhere on the order of 30 or 40 deaths, um, mostly in kids under the age of six and all kinds of, of complications. In fact, about 45 or 46 percent of the accidental ingestions leads to injury. Um, there's cases of kids that have had damage to their vocal cords and they can no longer speak. So we set out to solve this problem. We noticed that the, uh, when you have a battery inside a device that there's a spring that pushes on the, the battery, whereas when you, if you accidentally swallow a device, the forces that the gut places on that battery are much lower than the force within a device. And so we saw an opportunity there. So we developed a coating that is pressure sensitive. When you place this battery with a coating into a device, the spring of the device pushes on the coating and converts from an insulator to a conductor. If you swallow the battery accidentally, the forces of the gut are not strong enough um, to convert that coating into a conductor, so it remains as an insulator and it's fully waterproofed. Um, and so we were able to show that we could feed these batteries to pigs um, with no damage whatsoever. We could take the batteries and place them in stomach acid for 48 hours and had no release of battery acid and no current that was formed. We published a paper uh, in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science and were really overwhelmed with the response um, to, this, to this work. Um, this was picked up by several media outlets including uh, BBC, um, NPR, uh, and, and, and many, many others. We had uh, parents writing into to us um, who have had kids where there had been an accidental ingestion. Um, we had patient safety advocacy groups who, who contacted us, uh, and even uh, the government um, contacted us. They've been trying to, to solve this problem for a long time, and also battery companies. Uh, and so we've been working with um, these multiple groups to try and figure out how can we um, uh, take this coding, scale it up to large-scale manufacturing because there's somewhere on the order of, of seven or eight billion, well that's with a B, billion button cell batteries that are produced every year. And so for this solution really to work, we have to solve a scalability um, challenge, which we think we have um, by engineering this um, coding um, with scalability in mind. And so we're currently working with a number of groups uh, to develop a plan to scale this technology and to try to get it out in practice as quickly as we can. For the coding, we turn to a technology that already exists called quantum tunneling composites. And these are very simple materials, but they have very special properties. The material is essentially a silicone material, compressible material that has metal particles inside. And the particles are too far away to conduct a current. So when you apply a current to this material, it acts like an insulator. When you push on the material, the particles get close together, but they don't actually touch. And that's where this really interesting phenomena called tunneling occurs, whereby electrons are able to jump from one particle to the next even if the particles are not touching. So they don't even have to go through the silicone material that's nearby. And it's really harnessing this property of electrons where the electron is behaving as a cloud uh, and not as a particle. This is how we've been able to achieve a pressure sensitive coating that is insulating in its native state, but when force is applied, such as the force of a spring inside the compartment of a device, it is converted to a very efficient conductor. And so together with, uh, with Bob Langer, uh, we formed a startup company called Lansdowne Laboratories. And Lansdowne Laboratories is focused entirely on this problem of safer batteries um, to really reduce the um, risk um, to children. 
We're very interested uh, to work with industry partners on this technology. Uh, we see it as a platform in nature. Um, not only can it provide a solution um, to, to enable safer batteries, um, but we've also developed strategies to weatherproof batteries, which we see as having uh, a lot of applications, um, for example, in the military or having batteries that can exist within harsh environments.